Hi guys, what's going on? Uh, Devil Breaker here, and I'm finally going to take moral ownership of the name, because I've had that name for years, and I guess now it's canon in DMC5. I've already made a joke about that, but the truth is, I kind of just... It's this weird thing I've been going through today and for the last couple of months. First, I'm going to start off by explaining that I like making Devil May Cry videos. I like making videos about a game I find myself passionate in, but to be quite honest, I just don't find myself caring about YouTube as much as I used to. And it's not a thing in me exclusively, it's also the platform. To tell you the truth, I just do not like YouTube because of what it's mutated into. Uh, I don't even know where to begin, other than some people want to use it to make money, some people are lucky enough to do so, but even their winning streaks don't last forever. And take it from the world, take a little lesson from the planet Earth. Or any planet, uh, eventually. Just because you're on top doesn't mean you'll always be on top forever. And I kind of found out the hard way with my gameplay style of Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition and Devil May Cry 3. And it's not just about playing as Virgil. Even though the footage you're predominantly getting is Virgil. And I'm going to tell you right now. I haven't played this game in such a long while that... I'm just not as good as I used to be. I'm still good, like, I'm great, I just haven't had the time to practice, and I have been... It, it took me actually 17, I think it was between 10 to 20, somewhere around 17 different tries in order to go through Dante Must Die mode, because that's the difficulty you're getting. It's Dante Must Die mode in one shot. No cuts, no jump cuts, no clips, it's all just one piece of footage straightforward. And I think it goes for about 12 minutes or so, maybe a little more. Uh, it might be 15, around 15-ish. And I'm just not that good at DMC4 because I did let my skill, I wouldn't say die, it's more like I focused on other things, and that's okay, because to tell you the truth, and I gotta find a new expression for that too. We're getting older, we're all changing, we're all doing our thing. I'm amazed I have time for video games at all. I'm in college, and I imagine that a lot of people are as well. Some people are in school, others have jobs, and it really sucks when you want to do something that you're really passionate about, but you can't really make the time, and it's a terrible thing. But, you know, it's part of life. That's just the meaning of growing up. Uh, you can always make time, and I won't. I don't suggest that anyone not do it. It's just a lot harder. And believe me, I've had a very strange week. I've tried to do these recordings with friends, but I fell behind because of the workload involved. I don't mean to get too personal, or personal... Uh, to that degree, to any degree to begin with, but to tell you the truth, I am getting older and I'm growing and moving on. We all are. I mean, youth doesn't last forever as much as some people would like it to. My gameplay skills with Virgil and Double May Cry, I will say that they have rusted a bit, but in this video, I actually want to show you that despite your skills uh, wearing down over time, when you don't use them, despite not ref uh, sharpening your sword, you can still do well. I mean, I'd like to think of this video just like you saw with Burial. Yes, I get hit once. Yes, I get hit twice. It doesn't matter, though, because you just got to keep practicing. I, don't, I may not have that luxury anymore, but that might change with 5. But even then, I kind of feel like Devil May Cry 4 as a game to me, me doing the boss rush with Virgil is kind of my swan song for this game. As far as capturing and uploading YouTube footage goes, but it really depends. I mean, a lot of people would have to be really, really interested in Devil May Cry 4. Let's just say that in limited circumstances, I would come back to play the game. And I'm not trying to make this about me. I'm not trying to boast my skill. I kind of just, like, I love the game. It's what I find passionate, like how some people play fighting games or Call of Duty, if they still play that game. Uh, first-person shooters, or action-adventure, platforming. For me, it's action games like Devil May Cry, God of War, Bayonetta, Metal Gear, Rising Revengeance, Legend of Korra. To tell you the truth, l let me rephrase that. To be frank, I kind of just have rusted because I have focused on other things, and when you have multiple strengths, it is not easy to go through anything you like. There's a saying, Jack of Trades sometimes means Jack of all trades, master of none, or some, uh, yeah, jack of trades, uh, not really a master of all, or not really a master of one, I'm sorry, I can't really, uh, try to focus on that, and this is not me playing the game as I talk, 
it is extremely difficult to play Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition or any of the Devil May Cry games and talk while knowing what you're doing. I mean, hey, if you have the concentration power, good for you. With Devil May Cry 4 as a game, I've learned something, though. Even though my skills have rusted over the years, you can't force concentration to happen. I don't know if you guys heard that uh, going off, but that's fine. What? Well, <laughs> Okay, you can't force concentration to happen. You sort of have to blend in with it, and it's there. Playing D Dante Must Die mode with all these characters, with Dante, with Nero, with Virgil, Lady and Trish, I, I that reminds me as well. I never picked up Lady and Trish. I just, I kind of wanted to, but then I just saw Lady's moves used as a rehash of Dante's gunslinger animations, and Trish kind of takes from Dante's Swordmaster skill set, Though I cannot confirm that. I played with them for a limited time. I just didn't really see the appeal. And Devil May Cry 4 has five characters in an incomplete game. The game is incomplete. Even though, you know, you can play the characters. You can use different timings, different button presses, different combos, different combinations, different movesets, uh, strategies, and tactics. Devil May Cry 4 has always had this potential, this wall holding back the game as it is. Now, let's get to the actual gameplay. I really felt like commentating on Burial and Dagon, I think is his name, but I just couldn't do it. I, I, I had to come out with this because, as much as I love these games, I can't play them forever, and they're really good. And eventually, physically, you get worn down. Your bones get older, you're, you, know, you grow up. Well, I don't want to say grow up, but you age out. And who knows? Maybe there's someone in their 40s playing this game. I don't know if I'll be playing this game till I hit my senior citizen years. Maybe. And I don't really have any obligations outside of school, some volunteer work, a potential job. We all have stuff like that. You know, it's called life. And I am trying to get to play with friends. I'm trying to get the opportunity to either stream or record episodes. This is why I make zero promises. Because nothing is ever truly guaranteed in the world. It's not something you learn by, just by hearing people, or just by speaking to someone. It's kind of just, you know, you pick it up as you go. At least, that's what I like to believe. But as for Virgil, my skill set is actually not bad. Yes, I do get hit a few times, but I'm actually okay with that, because look at what I'm doing. I'm using my terrain. It's not just fighting the demon. I have an open, wide area. I can teleport all over the place. And there's three health, green ho three green health orbs in order to pick up, to regenerate my health. So that in Dante Must Die mode, if you do get hit without Devil Trigger, you will die in about two or three hits. But with Devil Trigger, you can cut down the damage by two-thirds or by half. And in order to avoid damage, like you see what I'm doing with the combo? You have to stun enemies by using different movesets. If you repeat, the chances of stunning an enemy are lessened. And with Virgil here, you have an opportunity to close in with the swords, and yeah, when the screen zips around, you have to zip around too. You sort of have to blend with it. And so far, I think that for a guy who took quite a bit of damage but didn't really have to use items traditionally through the menu, I think that was actually a pretty good performance with Echidna just now. Echidna the She-Viper. And this is the boss rush, and I didn't have to retry or die. I kind of just did it all in one, but I did have to do multiple takes because I tried to force this concentration to happen, and I just couldn't do it. So the best thing that I am happy to have done was to just sort of, you know, keep it cool, like Virgil. I, I, it's funny because I feel like I'm resonating with the game's mechanics a little bit, so to speak. Like, I can relate to them. Virgil succeeds when he sort of, when he keeps a cool head. And as for the rest of what you see here, I never liked the dice game. I mean, you kind of just have to predict which number the dice block will show when you strike it. Yeah, it's kind of a weird mini game. And we have Agnes here. We have, let's see, I'm zipping around in this clip. And the problem with dodging Agnes is because it, you have to consider three targets or you have to huddle them together so that you can take them out simultaneously. That's my issue with Agnes. If you don't do it, there's really no backup plan on impulse. And with Virgil here, you kind of have to bring out summon swords a little early, and you have to 
this whole fight, you have to keep an eye on one target while sort of turning a side eye to his moving swords. That's another issue. I, I mean, I, it's not an issue. It's more like one of the challenges you face when fighting Agnes. But the round trip is useful here in order to keep him locked in. Like, he can't go anywhere. Oh, but that's another problem, too. If you try to take out two of his minions or three of his minions, he, that gives him preparation time to use the swords. Oh, and I just dodged there. I don't know if that was dumb luck or if I just kind of knew it was coming. When you play this fight a lot, you can sort of feel what he's going to do. Sometimes by memorizing his attack patterns. Now, as for Virgil... Okay, so I don't get hit here. That's actually a pretty good sign. So, this is my chance to combo him, and I have to bring out summon swords. You see what I mean? I have to sort of huddle the enemies together. I can regen my health, uh, my devil trigger, and maybe my health, by taking out his little assistants, we'll call them. And as for Virgil here, you have to... You can, you can do one of two things. You can taunt, or you can lock him in with round trip, using force edge. The, um, the broad, the gray sword. Now, what I do here, you see, that's how to get him out of his prep animation to try and drain me of my health. Like, he's going to try and do that. The best thing to do would be to round trip him. And here, I don't know if round trip works on the fireballs. I don't think they do. I think that just sort of stunt locks him. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't think it does anything, judging from the visual cues I'm picking up. And the best thing you can do is just F with teleports using Virgil here. And when he's charging up, I use the lunar kick. The somersault kick in midair because its animation duration lasts a while. So, yeah. And that's it. That's the boss rush. I'm not going to fight Kratos. I know some people have questions about that. I do have one clip of him, but that takes a lot of preparation and you don't get to fight him again. And the game would be damn near impossible for most people when it comes to patience if they stuck in Kratos as part of the rush. And there's also one more bit. It's not just the boss. It's not just the uh, the restart bosses, the rebuilt enemies. There's also one more. Let's stop to look at Agnes. Okay, and we have here Agnes. I mean, not Agnes. Uh, I'm sorry, Sanctus, Sanctus Diabolica, the final boss of DMC4. If you play Dante Must Die, if you've played it all the way up until now, he's not really much of a challenge as long as you know what you're doing every time. Like, if you know how to parry him, when to stun him, when to ha thrust him into mid-air. With Virgil, you just have to use a few aerial hits. And you do have to break his shield. It's not that hard, given the concentration meter. I think it does make Virgil OP as F. Like, I'm not going to swear on this video. I actually just kind of want to keep it clean if I can. So, the thing about Sanctus Diabolica is basically the same as before, but you're actually in a closed area, which, contrary to Devil May Cry 4, closed areas are not that common in this game, and in some ways, it's actually Sanctus's Achilles heel. Achilles heel. And it's not that hard to break him out of his animation prep mode, whatever attack he wants to use. You see this? You could break him out of it, but that's assuming you haven't stunned him, or you haven't used a bread and butter technique. Now, as for anything else I could sort of critique about my own video, and, and yeah, this is actually meant to be a sort of dual critique so that I can relearn this stuff going forward. I don't know if Devil May Cry 5 will have Virgil playable. I'm a little bit, oh, well, let's just say heartbroken, that you can't play as this character as far as we know. Maybe he'll be in there. I don't know. Capcom hasn't said anything. Dante and Nero are still fun. Dante is at his best in DMC3. Nero is the fun part about DMC4. I think Virgil tops both of them, but hey, that's just my bias. And as for anything else, with Virgil, if you know how to repeat a few combos and splice in differences, then yeah. I, it's smooth sailing, honestly. Devil May Cry 4, I had a lot of fun. I'll miss it. This is my goodbye to this game. I... Don't think I'll be playing it regularly or even uploading as much as I used to. I've deleted many files that I just didn't feel were good enough for me to actually use by uploading. 
And streaming, I haven't been big on streaming Devil May Cry games. You only get one shot, and if you mess up, it's kind of hard to undo that. And Devil May Cry 4, it's a really good game. It's just It just needs to be completed. DMC5, I believe, will do that. I'm very confident that the game is going to go really well. I Sometimes I have doubts, you know, because my favorite character personally isn't in there. But you know what? It may be time to adapt and to just enjoy what you get with Dante, Nero, and V. Devil May Cry 4... Devil May Cry 3, Devil May Cry 1, and I have played DMC 2. I've invested in all the multimedia. I actually thought about doing a book read through audio, but I kind of feel like the stories found in literature and manga should be done by you guys. Like, I don't really believe in giving away everything in terms of spoilers. I kind of wish people would spend more time reading the manga and the literary novel. Literary work, I'm sorry. And as for Virgil here... I've actually killed more enemies in this post credit scene, I mean, in this mid credit scene, than I have in previous runs. Look at the number I get up to, because I've actually never gotten up to this number. Maybe I have before, but it is really rare. I didn't expect to kill 39, 40 enemies. I just said, F you to the game. And over here, nearing the end credits... I'm going to try and not play it with the copyrighted music because I know Capcom and YouTube are a little bit sensitive about that sort of issue. Me, I don't need to be a big YouTuber just to make to make money or to get notoriety. I love Double May Cry. I've played it since almost half a decade ago. I've enjoyed the games. It's been a good run. DMC1, DMC2, DMC3, DMC4. I might do a little bit of uploads from footage I previously collected, but I don't expect to go back into these games. I'm having a lot of fun with the hype for DMC5. And I have played the demos. Nero, Nero's a very refined character, but that's a whole separate conversation. I enjoyed playing as Virgil and Dante and Nero and all the characters in every game. Hell, even Lucia in DMC2. She's not that bad. A little bit fun if you try to lower your expectations a bit. But these games have been great to me. They're part of what made my channel successful as far as, you know, reaching... A, a, a thousand subs. I didn't even think I could reach a thousand, let alone 500. But I'm happy for what I have, and I don't need that much more, and I'm not interested in, in wanting that much more. I'm going to make content when I feel that it's viable, when I feel that it's good. Sometimes commodities can destroy the quality, or, or I'd say integrity, of an idea. But hey, you do you. I'll do me, and see you guys in DMC5. Oh, hold on. Let me. What's my ranking? Let me see what's my ranking. I'm very curious about that. Triple S! And I expected no less. <sighs> like I said, good talk, you guys. And wish me luck. And even though no one's Maximilian or any of the big YouTubers, I feel I have promise to offer for Devil May Cry. And I like playing the games. But I'll let my actions and my message speak for me. My gameplay. Alright, guys. See you in Double May Cry 5. Can't wait.